I got a tip that someone saw this secret ingredient in the back area of Franklin Barbecue. Could this be the secret sauce that Aaron Franklin adds to his briskets to make them taste so amazing? In this video, I'm going to explore whether this barbecue conspiracy theory is confirmed, convincing, or just plain crazy. So let's get smoking. So this is a bit of a wild theory. I got a message from one of my viewers and he said his buddy was on a back area tour at Franklin Barbecue and he saw this, which is Golden Mountain Season. Seasoning. It's made of soybean sauce, water, sugar, salt, and I plus G, which is a flavor enhancer commonly used to enhance the flavor of glutamates. And this stuff has plenty of glutamates. It's like an umami sucker punch, and it's really freaking tasty. Now, if my source is correct, and who knows, this is really secondhand hearsay. It's not a lot of evidence. If he is correct, though, this Golden Mountain seasoning could be used at Franklin Barbecue on the pork ribs, the pulled pork, or any number of other things other than the brisket. But if it is being used on the brisket, and that's the theory we're exploring, then I could see it being used in three ways. First, you could slather it on the brisket before applying the rub. You could spritz it on the brisket during the cook. And third, you could add it to the tallow before you wrap the brisket in butcher paper. It could be any or all of these things. So I'm going to cook a test brisket and do all three of these things to it. And I'm going to compare the taste to the taste of the brisket that I experienced when I went to Franklin Barbecue. So let's start with the trimming, the slathering, and the rubbing of the brisket. All right, this is a 16 pound brisket. Brisket. So we're going to trim this down a lot though. I'm going to trim this down to like probably like nine or 10 pounds after I take a bunch of the fat off, but it's still going to be a pretty big boy. But before I cut into this and I start trimming it, I've got to get my protection on. First, starting with my tinfoil hat. So Aaron Franklin can't read my mind. Second thing I need to do is put my gloves in a bottle on my hands. This is the first line of protection for the old digits. Put a little bit of that on. You're only supposed to use a little squeeze, actually. And what this stuff does, this is serious, guys. This is not some sort of fun conspiracy theory, like funny thing. This is an actual thing that I do. It just protects my hands from getting super dry because it's dry where I live here. And, uh, you know, I'm doing dishes a lot, washing my hands constantly. This stuff is awesome. Gloves in a bottle, check it out because it uh, it's a barrier cream and it keeps your hands really, really nice. <laughs> okay, and finally I'm putting on my black Pitmaster gloves. Actually, this cream makes these easier to put on because these gloves are so insanely small. Get a little lube on there. It helps a lot. Guys, before we get to trimming and seasoning, I'd like to thank SureShot SIDS for sponsoring this video. SureShot SIDS is an amazing line of rubs that will take your barbecue to the next level. These rubs have next level ingredients like their proprietary grillin' flavor that makes your meat taste like it just came off a charcoal grill. Really love this stuff. There's MSG in some of the rubs for a new mammy bomb of flavor. There's bacon flavoring and charcoal powder in some of the rubs for a darker bark. There's even a coffee rub that I used on pork belly and it tasted absolutely amazing. These aren't your run-of-the-mill rubs, and I'd say they strike a balance between what a competition and backyard barbecuer would want, and that's right up my alley because I do both. If you guys haven't tried out SureShot SIDS, click the link in the description section below and get yourself some to try out today. You won't regret it. All right, let's get back to trimming this brisket. All right, we're ready to go. So what I like to do, and I've never seen anyone do this before actually, but I like to do it because it's really easy. I'm gonna make a cut around here to slice off the thinner part of the flat. And I just do it with the cryovac already on the brisket. And then I just slide out the brisket once I'm, once I'm done cutting it in a sort of crescent half moon shape. I'll give it another cut there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this thing is gonna come off. This is just trim. All right, here's where the magic happens. So I've cut this bag open and I've also cut that crescent moon shaped cut of meat out. So now all I have to do is just pull the brisket out of the cryovac in one fell swoop. And it saves a lot of time if you're doing a lot of briskets. So let's take a look at this guy. It's got a pretty big flap here. A lot of people, this thing is uh, comes in the cryovac with um, the flap pressed in and they cook it like this without doing any trimming and trimming this flap off. And, and this thing just kind of curls open like that. And at the end of the cook, they've got this giant like spiky thing on the brisket and they're wondering what that is. Well, you just have to pull the flap back and cut it off. And I like to make nice smooth cuts with my dowel strong slicing knife. It's a 14 incher. So I'm just gonna cut this whole thing off. 
And I've got this uh, kind of hard kernel of fat. Usually what I look for now in briskets is I look for this seam fat here to be as small as possible because sometimes it is just huge and it pushes up the entire point from the flat. And the smaller and thinner you can get this uh, seam fat, the better you're gonna be because if it's, if it's huge, then you have to trim more of the point away to get rid of all that hard fat and then you're left with less point meat, especially if you wanna trim off this hump and make everything aerodynamic. So this is nice and thin, I'm liking the look of that. So I've kind of started here, giving it a quarter inch, starting right there, and then I've kind of sliced it up. And you can go as deep as you want, really. What, what you're doing really is cutting away some of this point muscle here in order to get more of that seam fat. Because we want to get rid of that seam fat because it's just not going to make pretty slices and you can't really eat it. So you can see how this is getting more aerodynamic now. I know this isn't a brisket trimming video, but I know a lot of you guys have been watching me for a long time and I like to keep you up to speed on what my current brisket trimming technique is. And this is currently what I do. Sometimes I'll trim it even more and I'll, I'll come down and, and trim all that off until really it's just the flat muscle exposed here. But in this case, I wanna make it look a little bit more cohesive and leave a little bit more of this point muscle on here because uh, there's, there's not much to it. There's not a really big point muscle here. And now we're gonna start shaving away the fat cap. And this is what I find to be the most experience intensive process of cooking a brisket is the trimming. It's really hard and the only way you can really good at it is by doing it over and over again. For example, I'm cutting this off and I know there's not gonna be meat under it because of the way it looks and the way it feels. It's hard. It doesn't feel like it has meat right underneath it, but over here, like this obviously has meat right underneath it. And if I cut it at all, it's just going to scalp it and expose the meat. It just depends on how much risk you want to take. I know this can come off, for example, and that's not too risky of a cut. Okay, and now this part of the point here, you can be pretty safe cutting a lot of it off. It's usually pretty thick. So I'm gonna be pretty aggressive here. Like I, I took off a really big chunk. And now I'm just kind of shaving it like an ice sculpture. Okay, and now I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna take this hard chunk of fat off, just slice it right out. It's really no art to it. Might go in with my smaller knife here and just kind of carve it out. There we go. Now I'll take some of this um, sort of oxidized stuff off. And finally, I'll take off the fat and the silver skin on the bottom of the brisket. And this is really where the art comes into it. I'm not really following any sort of technique here. I'm just looking at the brisket and trying to figure out how I want it to look. I mean, this just looks a little bit too square to me. I just don't like the look of it. So I'm gonna kind of round it off and try to make it look a little bit more pretty. And then this is another judgment call thing. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about how it's gonna shrink up as it cooks. And it's got this weird kind of pocket here. And I know that water is gonna pool there as the brisket cook and it's gonna inhibit the bark from forming. So I might make a judgment call and kind of cut this fat away, even though I think the fat makes the bark look better. I just don't want it messing with my bark later on in the cook. Okay, I'm happy with how this brisket is trimmed, so I'm gonna slather on some of the Golden Mountain seasoning sauce now. And I have kind of two thoughts about this. Either you could use this as a slather and it could just be a binder or a slather before you put your rub on and that could produce some flavor or you could put it on during the wrap phase. So when you wrap it in butcher paper, you could add some of this stuff and it'll add some flavor to the uh, fat and the tallow and the natural liquid and the beef flavor that's coming out of the brisket. In this case, I'm gonna do both, starting with the slather. So I'll just pop this lid open, flip it over, and we'll slather the back first. I won't put a ton on, I'll just put it as much liquid on as I usually put water on as a slather or a binder when I season a brisket. Ooh, I can smell that, it smells good. And I just wanna give you guys a close up of this. Look at this creepy little guy in the bottle. He looks like not really that happy. He's not like a happy little mascot. He's an evil looking impish kind of chef thing that doesn't even look human. Looks like he's gonna come down your chimney and steal all your animals and your pets. It's kind of weird. 
Man, that's terrifying. This stuff tastes like really concentrated soya sauce with a huge umami bomb. It hits the side of the tongue like a lemony tartness, uh, umami flavor, really soya saucy. It doesn't have any MSG in it, but it has uh, soybean sauce, which is soy sauce, uh, sugar, water, salt preservative, flavor enhancer, which is disodium 5 ribonucleotides, which is probably something like disodium inosinate or guanolate, which is frequently added to MSG as an MSG enhancer. So this stuff has a lot of natural glutamates in it. And with the flavor enhancer in it and everything that's in it, it's probably gonna do the same thing that MSG is gonna do. It just says no MSG and they get to market it as no MSG, even though it's probably molecularly identical to MSG once you add it to your meat and start cooking with it. But anyway, we'll slather this on. It's also gonna add extra salt, which is nice. And then I'm gonna do some pepper, some coarse grain pepper, because the Franklin barbecue spice rub does not have enough pepper in it. I'm not going crazy on the pepper. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of kosher salt, just for some textural difference. And now I'm going to bust out the Franklin Barbecue Spice Rub. This is the stuff that Aaron Franklin uses on his brisket, according to an article in Texas Monthly. So we'll give this a nice layer. I've done a ton of briskets with this spice and I know that it needs a lot of it. It's kind of like a umami, sort of tart, lemony kind of Lowry's, uh, a little bit sugary kind of flavor profile. It's got tomato powder in it, which creates kind of like a tartness on the side of the tongue. It's pretty good. You guys should definitely try it. I say that in every video. All right, now we're going to flip this beefy boy over and we're going to apply the Gold Mountain seasoning sauce to the other side of the brisket. Squirt, 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 squirt. Oh man, I want to eat this already. This smells freaking amazing. I could live in this bottle. That smells really good. Okay, now same on this side. I'm going to do a little bit of pepper. And I'm going to do a little bit of kosher salt. <laughs> and I'm going to hit it with some of the Franklin barbecue spice as a finishing topping. Okay. That looks pretty nice to me. And I'll give you guys a little bit of close up. Look at that. Mmm. Wow. That actually looks really good. I'm pretty excited about this. After the brisket is rubbed, I'm heading outside to clear the snow off Big Beefy Luigi and lighting him up using my grill gun. This thing is awesome and gets a fire started in about 60 seconds without having to mess with a charcoal chimney. If you guys wanna check it out, I'll link it below. Then the brisket is going on at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm opening up the smoker to spritz the brisket around every hour with half and half Golden Mountain seasoning and water. Then I'm cooking it how I normally cook a brisket, taking it up to 190 internal. Then it gets wrapped with some tallow, some clarified butter, and I'm also adding a few dashes of the Golden Mountain seasoning, wrapping it up tightly, placing it in my holding chest, and it's going to hold at a steady 150 Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 hours. Okay, let's open up this brisket. It's been holding for... 18 hours now, so I think it's gonna be done and we're gonna see if it tastes close to what I experienced at Franklin Barbecue. Sound good? Let's do it. Can't be handling brisket without my black pit master gloves. Actually, I'm gonna put some lotion on first. I love this gloves in a bottle stuff. Protects my hands. It puts the lotion on its skin or it gets the brisket again. Man, I'm being extra creepy in this video series. I hope you guys aren't taking this too seriously. I'm not actually crazy. <laughs> okay, let's get this guy out of here. Okay, let's open this guy up. Da -da 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 -da. What do we have here behind door number one? It's a brisket. A brisket. Mm. Let's cut into this guy. I'm going to... Flipper around that way. 
Oh, I can't make a dolphin noise. No, 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 no. I'm editing that out. Okay, I'm gonna cut into this now. Ooh, it's feeling pretty nice. I'm liking the way that it feels, baby. Ooh, woohoo! It's looking good, baby. Mmm, that is looking delicious. And we'll get a nice slice of the flat. I'm gonna coat it in this tallow that has the Golden Mountain seasoning in it. I'll give you guys a look at this little brisky here. Ooh, it's looking good. All right, let's see if I can pull it apart. Pulls apart really nice. No problems there. Looking good. Let's take a bite of this guy. Hmm, it's actually really tasty. I thought it was gonna taste way more like this Golden Mountain seasoning, but this stuff kind of mellows out and you can't really taste it that much. You just taste that umami sort of soy sauce flavor in the background, but it really rounds it out, adds some glutamate type MSG flavor, uh, really umami flavor to it. It's actually quite tasty. And it does produce the citrusy sort of lemony tartness on the sides of the tongue that I experienced at Franklin Barbecue. So, I mean, this could be it in some quantities. I'm not sure. It does add to it. It's better with this stuff than without it. I can tell you that much. Mmm, that is tasty. I do like that a lot, actually. Surprisingly good. Okay, let's cut into this point now. I am gonna carve this off. And I'm gonna do some big old burnt ends here. Oh man, this brisket. This is actually a really good brisket. I got lucky with this one, I think. I mean, I used all of my skill and experience to produce the best brisket ever. Let's cut into this guy now. Okay, all right, let's get some big chunkers here. One slice, two slices. Oh, this looks good. Three slices, ooh, squeezing juices out. Mm. Four slices, all right, I'm gonna go with this bad boy. Soak it in some of this tallow. I'll give you guys a close up. Whew. That's looking really good. Let's see if it pulls apart. Oh yes, oh God, this is gonna be good. I'm excited, super excited. All right, I'm gonna get some more of this tallow on it with the Golden Mountain seasoning. Oh my God, where am I? Oh, that's right, I'm still on camera. Oh my God, guys, this Golden Mountain seasoning, it somehow produces this super umami, glutamate heavy taste, citrusy on the side of the tongue. Just delicious, robust flavor without being too salty. All right, so what do I think about this? Do I think that Aaron Franklin is using Golden Mountain seasoning on his briskets, either during the slather and rub phase or spritzing it during the cook or adding it to the wrap juice? I have no idea. All I know is that it has a similar profile to the flavor that I tasted at Franklin Barbecue in that it kind of produces a citrusy kind of flavor on the sides of the tongue and a really glutamate heavy umami flavor in the mouth that I definitely experienced at Franklin Barbecue. So he might be using this, but if he is, he's probably using it in smaller quantities than you saw me use it in this video. Maybe he's just adding a little bit or maybe he's adding something similar. Now, Franklin Barbecue did tell me that they're not adding MSG to anything. So if you didn't want to add MSG to anything in your restaurant and you still wanted MSG flavor and glutamate and umami flavor, I would definitely use something like this. So maybe he's using it, maybe he's not. Is this theory confirmed? confirmed, convincing, or totally crazy. It's definitely not confirmed and it's definitely not convincing because all the evidence that I have is some guy on Facebook reached out to me and said that his buddy said that he saw this product at Franklin Barbecue during a tour of the back pit area and the kitchen area. And that is the only piece of evidence I have besides this test, which is kind of similar to what I tasted at Franklin Barbecue, but not exactly on point and not exactly what I tasted. So it's kind of crazy. There's not a lot of evidence, but it could be possible. It's within the realm of possibility. I'd say it's plausible, 
but it's just, we just don't have a lot of evidence and we're not gonna know until Aaron Franklin comes out and says, this is exactly what I'm using on my brisket at this time. So until then, all I know is that this stuff makes brisket taste really good. And I'm probably gonna use it on my brisket and experiment with it going forward. And I'll probably use it on some of my briskets and see how my family likes it. If they like it, then I'll keep using it. If they don't really like it or they don't taste the difference, then maybe I won't. But so it's worth experimenting with on your own briskets with something like exactly this product or something similar because it does add a lot of flavor. But I'd like to hear from you guys. Do you think this theory is completely crazy or if it might be kind of plausible? Do you think you'd use this product at home or something similar to it on your own brisket and try it out? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you guys want to get more involved in the Smoke Trails Barbecue community, be sure to join my Patreon. It's in the description section below. You'll get access to a private Discord chat server where you'll get direct access to me and I can answer all your questions in real time. And you get early access to videos and access to an awesome community of barbecue nerds that are all trying to get better at barbecue. You can join the Smoke Trails Barbecue Nerds group on Facebook. You could follow me on Instagram or you could just like, subscribe, and comment below that all helps and it grows the community so thanks a lot guys and I'll see you in the next video until then happy smoking